I lured a homeless woman to my house, hoping to have sex with her. I am 43 did this almost 10 years ago, and it's something I've never told anyone before. It was hugely reckless, manipulative, and occurred during a time of rampant self-destruction and reckless behavior for me following a nasty divorce. I was living alone and very lonely, not finding any luck in regular dating or even one night stands. I started using Craigslist and back pages to find hookups. I connected with a woman, Michelle, who was in a nearby city and claimed to be homeless and was looking for help. I had seen tons of scam like this and had fallen for a few, where a personals ad was really just a step one of a larger scheme to get some fast cash. I decided to play along a little and we chatted for a day or so. We were connecting and I began to think she was telling the truth, or at the very least was a consistent storyteller. We exchanged pics and she was reasonably okay looking, older than me by about 7 years, but not some bag type lady person. Honestly, not someone I would have otherwise pursued, but for the fact that I thought if I gave her a place to sleep, she'd be grateful and let me have sex with her. So, we made arrangements for me to come to meet her downtown one evening, and we had coffee in a diner. She was actually sort of kind of cute in person. She was really short but very loud, intelligent. She was crafty and showed me pictures of a bunch of stuff she'd made by hand like knitting and dollhouse furniture. She loved sending physical letters and cards in the mail. She loved handwriting and calligraphy and said letters felt more personal than texting or emails. But she was also definitely a bit weird. I remember she had some really strong opinions about mundane food choices and went off on some bizarre conspiracy theory tangents with next to no prompting. I chalked it up to her living on the streets and thought I could probably manage a little weird if it meant I could get what I wanted. I decided to roll the dice because above all things, I was incredibly horny and desperate. I invited her back to my apartment, saying she could stay with me a few days if she wanted. She didn't hesitate, even a second. She only had two small bags with her, so we grabbed those and took off back to my apartment. To be absolutely clear again, I was not doing this to be a good guy or because I cared about her. At no point did I ever genuinely want to help this woman or improve her life. This was 100% in the hopes of getting her comfortable enough at my place that we'd hook up. Every dollar I spent in gas or coffee was mentally calculated as a cost of getting to that point. Every kindness and word I said that first night was part of a larger design. At the time, I think I was even trying to fool myself into thinking I was being a nice guy. But now, years later, I can see how manipulative it all was. I never intended to physically force her to do anything she didn't want to do, but I was most definitely trying to build a path towards us having sex. And I was definitely abusing a power dynamic by trying to create a situation where she was 1. at my place with no convenient means to leave on her own, and 2. felt obligated to repay my generosity. So, we went back to my apartment and I let her shower, get cleaned up, have a late night snack. We watch some TV and cuddle up on the couch, and she's just incredibly grateful and also very clingy. She would sit really close and at one point asked if we could hold hands. Later, she broke down a little and cried because she said she'd not felt safe in probably eight months or so. She had either been staying on the streets, in shelters, cars, or with someone who was dangerous because she had no other options. She thanked me repeatedly for being kind and giving her a chance. Each time, I told her it was no problem, I was happy to do it, I was so glad I could help, etc. But none of that was true. I was still just waiting for the right time to see if I could pivot into something physical. She asked how long she could stay. We'd already discussed this before and I agreed to let her come over and I told her just three days. I had partial custody of my kids at this time and could not let her be there while the kids were with me. She seemed to swing wildly back and forth between sadness and gratitude and not knowing what to do next. I couldn't be sure I would succeed if I made a move, so I left it alone. As the night wore on, I told her I needed to get to bed because I had to work tomorrow, and she said, okay, but just sort of sat and waited for me to do or say something else. I walked her back to my kids' room and told her she could sleep in here. There was a bunk bed and lots of clean linens and stuff in there, and I told her I would be right down the hall if she needed anything in the night. I could tell she was really surprised. 
I started to realize that I was not being smooth or clever, and that she 100% expected and anticipated me wanting her to come to my bed. And I now know I am not the first or last guy to abuse her in this way, and I think vulnerable people sort of just get used to being taken advantage of. I wanted it to be her choice, and didn't want to tell her or even suggest to her to come to my room. In my screwed up head, I thought that still made me somewhat honorable. So, I left her there, and she slept in my kid's bedroom all night, and I slept in mine. I waited up about 45 minutes hoping she'd come down the hall. At one point, I heard her get up and use the hall toilet, and I got excited and almost immediately rock hard thinking, this is it, like it was some kind of adult film intro. But then, she went back to the other room. We woke up the next morning, and she was so happy. She said it was the best night's sleep she had in a very long time. We had a quick breakfast and coffee that morning before I left for work, and she asked if I could give her some cash for the day. Alarm bells were ringing in my head, but my you-know-what was still in charge, and I wasn't thinking clearly. She claimed she wanted to walk to the nearest store and get some cleaning supplies and clean my apartment as a thank you for letting her stay. I told her she didn't need to do that or repay me at all, but she really wanted to. So, I gave her $50 and left her there in my apartment for the day. In hindsight, it was an insanely stupid thing to do. I could have been completely cleaned out and robbed by the time I came home. She could have invited other people over, gotten high, or trashed the place. We texted a little during the day, but I never knew for sure what I was going to come back to, so I was getting increasingly anxious. And up to the point that I actually walked in, I was still half expecting her to be gone, along with my TV and anything else of value. But no, she was there and had done exactly what she'd said. She walked to the freaking Walmart and gotten a bunch of stuff, cleaners, and a new mop and had cleaned my whole kitchen and both bathrooms, vacuumed, and everything. When I got home, she ran up to me and hugged me, and it was like we'd been living together for a long time. She showed me everything she cleaned and playfully reprimanded me for not having better supplies. She asked me about my day and how I was doing and we just had a great rhythm and a lovely evening. I remember she asked to cook and I said sure, but because I was a dumb single guy at the time, I didn't have much. She made some kind of chicken something dish from what she could find and it was honestly pretty terrible, but I smiled and thanked her and told her it was great because it was a sweet gesture and also because everything seemed to be coming together. We cuddled again that night watching a movie and this time she started to get pretty bold. She would hug me and run her hands under my shirt and put her fingers through my hair and laid her head on my shoulder and touched my legs a lot. I just let her do whatever she wanted. I gave very little back even though I was so turned on. I wanted to do more, but as soon as my plan started to obviously work, I began to feel incredibly guilty and like a complete POS for everything I'd done up to that point. The night went on and it was getting late. I told her again I needed to get to bed because of work in the morning. As we walked down the hall, I started to tell her good night at the other room and she just asked, can I sleep in your bed instead? And I said, I don't want you to feel like you have to do that. Absolutely a lie, by the way. I orchestrated this moment to make her feel that way and definitely wanted her in there. She said, no, I want to. This bed is nice, but I want to be next to you if that's okay. So, we both went to my room. Now, I don't know if she had decided to come in there during the day, besides to clean the adjoining bathroom, or if she would have respected my privacy. But she at least acted surprised because my bed's way nicer than the kids' bunk beds, obviously. She stripped down immediately and crawled into bed naked. She kind of hopped and bounced a little, laughing like a little kid, and she looked so happy to be there. I stripped down too, and really enjoyed just getting to see her whole body at last. As soon as the lights were down, she got really sexually aggressive right away. She crawled on top of me, and we were making out and grinding, and it felt incredible. I do remember, though, she was a terrible kisser. She did this thing where she would kind of open and close her mouth while she kissed, like she was chomping. But this was what I'd been planning for, and so we went for it. We rolled around for a couple hours, touched and kissed each other everywhere, and had sex twice that night, and I didn't even use protection because I was so lost in it. Incredibly stupid and reckless. The next day, it was like something had completely lifted me. Call it post-nut clarity, I guess, but I'd gotten what I wanted out of this exchange, so I was ready to move on. 
and I started to think more and more about how dangerous and reckless I'd been in this whole scenario. That next morning, she was sort of idly talking about the weekend coming up. I reminded her that I told her she'd only be here for three days. I could tell she was hoping that the previous night might have changed things, but I held firm. I began to immediately pull away emotionally because I didn't want to be manipulated into changing my mind. I got a bit colder to her and left for work again that morning. The whole way there, I was cursing my stupidity at being so cold. Not because I'd obviously hurt her feelings, but because now she might want to punish me. And I just left her alone again at my place. I got back home that evening and everything was fine. She had gone back to the store and had gotten some more food and had a nice dinner waiting for me. I tried to be so nice, but I was in such a terrible mood on the inside. I think because she was doing everything she could think of to show me how nice it was for her to be there, to be grateful, and all I could do was to see it through the same lens I'd used on her, that she was now manipulating me and trying to get me to fall for her so that I would let her stay. I tried to not let it show but I think she could definitely pick up on the change in the atmosphere. I said a few times that night about how I'd need to drop her off at some point the next day before my kids came over either before work or right after I got back. Essentially, making clear the plan wasn't going to change. By the end of the evening, she had made arrangements for a friend to come and pick her up. I told her, you can't let them in here, you know that, right? And I could tell it really hurt her feelings. She said she understood. When it was time for bed, the mood lifted a little, and we both got playful with each other again. We both slept in my room again that night, and despite how I acted, she was still all over me once the lights went off. We had sex again and cuddled for a little while after. I remember thinking in the dark while her head was on my chest and I was playing with her hair, I imagined what my life would be like if I decided to treat this woman like an actual person and not just use her and discard her. But then, I tried to imagine how I'd explain her to other people, or what my friends would think of her. Someday it might come out what I'd done, and someone else would see through my BS and realized I'd manipulated her. So, I started to focus on everything she'd done that I didn't like. Like the bad food, and the terrible kissing, the weird conspiracy stuff, and I just closed my mind to anything else. I'd done something reckless, but made it out with my kidneys intact and shouldn't try to push my luck any further. The next morning, I was feeling terrible, but wouldn't budge on her having to leave. I never even asked her where she would actually go, or who the friend was that was picking her up. All that mattered was that she'd been gone by the time I came back from work. She asked to keep in touch and for a way to send me a letter, so I gave her my P.O. box. She texted me during the day to tell me she got off safely and sure enough, she was gone by the time I got home. She left the place in great condition and even made the beds. I remember because my kids were like, Dad, why did you do that? Because I had never once made theirs for them. We had chatted via text for a little while longer. I want to maybe say a few weeks at most. Just very superficial, hey, how are you? Hope things are good type texts. She had gone back to the city where there were more resources for her and had hopes for a job lead. I just gradually stopped replying much and then at some point she never texted again. I am telling the story now in all its detail because I was and am a complete POS. I took advantage of this vulnerable woman for my own gain. Everything I did, everything I said, every act of generosity was done so that I could have sex with her. I didn't actually care about her or her situation or what happened to her when I was done. She was just someone who I could bang. I didn't SA her by the technical definition, but I definitely coerced her and manipulated her. I tried to justify it in my head by saying that these were her own choices, but I told her lies that I thought she'd want to hear. And I intentionally created a situation where she would have those choices to make. So now, I can unequivocally say I did something truly awful to this poor woman. It is something I will hide for the rest of my life out of shame and guilt because I know it was terrible, and it makes me question the kind of person I truly am at my core for having done it. I have to say, this has so far been one of my favorite stories to read on this channel. OP was very specific, didn't spare details, gave his thought process, realized he isn't the good guy here, and just told it without seemingly leaving gaps. I know a lot of people on Reddit, and I'm sure you do too as well, don't always do that. But, oh man, what do you guys think? 
I mean, he says he's a horrible person, so I'm not going to ask if you think that, because he admitted it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing what he did, but I, I don't even know what to ask you guys. It's just, oh, wow. I got nothing. Next story. Story number two. I lied about an injury, and it ended up actually saving me from permanent damage to my ankle. When I was about seven, I was moving to a new house with my family. I tripped and rolled my ankle in the bathroom, and it kind of hurt, but the pain went away after a few hours. But as a dumb and lazy kid, I decided to lie and say it still hurt really bad to get out of packing to move out. I kept this act on for about a week, and my mom decided I needed to go to the doctor to make sure I didn't sprain my ankle or anything like that. My little seven-year-old self started to panic a bit because I really felt no pain at all, but I thought I was too deep into the lie to back out by then. We went to the doctor and did an x-ray, and I was thinking, I'm screwed, I'm perfectly fine, and this x-ray will just prove I'm lying. The results came back, and I was thinking I was about to get in big trouble for lying about something so serious, and only for the doctor to say I fractured my whole ankle. Apparently, I was going on for days with a fractured ankle that didn't hurt whatsoever and didn't realize. I had to wear a boot for the entire summer. I felt guilty for lying about it for the longest time, but if I didn't, I could have seriously messed up my ankle. Now I laugh thinking of it since it is such a stupid story. No one except for me knows that I lied about this, and I don't know if I will ever tell my parents. Probably one of the more tame confessions on here, but definitely a strange one I thought I should share. I really don't know why my ankle didn't hurt. Story number three, I was a janitor and lived rent-free in the janitor's closet. I worked as a janitor in a school. There was a dedicated janitor's closet which was quite spacious. After I had finished vacuuming all the classes in the afternoon, I had to turn the security system on and leave within a minute. There was a caveat though. The front gate and the dedicated janitor closet were exempted from the motion cameras. I couldn't justify or afford spending half of my paycheck a week for what should be a human right, shelter. So I did what I had to do and simply lived in that closet. I saved over $20,000 in rent. I installed a mini fridge and an air fryer and had quite the time. The contract got changed, so I lost that gig. I feel a bit bad for freeloading off the school, but the government can provide insulated sheds to all of its citizens for a few billion dollars, but would rather spend much more on war and overinflated salaries for its oligarchs. I wouldn't do it again though, but best commute ever. Uh, how he shower? How he go potty? He doesn't explain that. How did he cleanse himself? Did he lick himself clean? Please don't tell me he doused himself in the mop bucket's contents. Oh no, that's gross. But you know what? Air fryers are awesome, and I'm glad he had one in his closet. Next story. Story number four. I controlled my neighbor's TV for six months from my phone, and I made him sell the TV. Now, I regret it. Last year, I had an a-hole neighbor who was always playing loud music, being rude to everyone, and would not pick up his dog's crap when they would go for walks right outside the building. The dog had a barking problem too, but I'm not hating on the dog. One evening, I had problems with the internet, and for poops and giggles, I tried to connect to my neighbor's Wi-Fi with a password, 0123456789. Guess what? It connected! The same evening at 11 p.m., I started hearing terrible drum and bass from my neighbor's apartment as usual, and all of a sudden, I see a pop-up appear on my phone. I have a Samsung phone, and when you open the YouTube app on any Samsung smart TV, a pop-up appears on your phone with the TV-casted YouTube app, as long as both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. You have full control of TV YouTube on your phone, pause, play, volume, skip video if it's a playlist, choose a different recommended video, etc. At first, I did not realize what the pop-up was and just thought, what the hell is this? I thought my phone was glitching. There were options, pause, forward, volume, etc. I pressed pause and all of a sudden, there was a silence in my neighbor's apartment. After a few seconds, the music started again and I saw that the play button turned to a pause button again on my phone. I pressed pause again. Music disappeared, and behind the wall, I hear, what the F? I cannot describe the feelings I had in that moment. 
My facial expression must have looked like that Chris Pratt meme from Parks and Rec. Oh snap. The music started playing again, and I pressed pause. Now I'm hearing grunts and profanities from my neighbor. I could feel his anger and confusion through the walls. I have never felt so much power in my life. God, the universe, or whatever you want to call it had blessed me with a gift. I kept screwing with him that evening. Pause, skip video, turn the volume up, turn the volume down. He tried turning the TV on and off, logging in and out of his YouTube account, and nothing seemed to work. He was so pissed off. It was the first time I was happy that the walls in our buildings are so thin. This went on for days. Turned out he mostly used YouTube on his TV to watch videos, podcasts, even to play music. He was going completely insane. He did switch to Spotify, I'm guessing, for music, but still, every time he wanted to watch a podcast or some videos, I was there, ready and waiting for him to feel my wrath. Throughout the next few months, I heard him call customer support multiple times, making him reset the TV to factory settings, logging in and out of the YouTube app countless of times. Sometimes I would stop messing with it for a couple of days to give him false hope. Then all of a sudden, when I hear him watching some comedy podcast that he's enjoying, I would start playing another video for him. He would literally scream. Long story short, after six months of this, as I'm walking down the hallway one day, I saw a random couple carrying the TV out of his apartment and him holding cash in his hand. I drove him to selling the TV and buying a new one. And in that moment, I felt bad and started to regret my actions. I felt kind of childish about the fact that I had been doing this for six months. Bad neighbor versus childish behavior. Who wins? Who's who's coming out on top? Nobody, really, because OP felt bad and uh, the, the neighbor lost the TV. Also, what did he say to sell the TV? Because in his eyes, it wasn't working or was glitching out. So did he just say, oh, it works fine, give me money? Anyway, as for me, I am so glad that I have thick walls. Otherwise, my neighbors would think that I'm insane, talk to myself, and I'm obsessed with Reddit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.